If you're watching this video, there's a really good chance that a piece of stereo equipment or a piece of gear has changed your life. I'm gonna go over the ones that have changed my life. This is gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna get into it right now. And the first one for me is not even a stereo. This is a mono jukebox from the early 60s. It is an AMI Continental One. I don't remember a time of my childhood without this jukebox being there. My sisters and I literally spent every single penny of our allowance on 45 RPM records. We had stuff by the Eagles, Credence Clearwater Revival, the Beatles, Elvis, you name it. And it was just constantly being played. Some of my earliest memories are of that jukebox and the size of it. You know, when you're three or four years old and you're looking at this gigantic machine that makes music, it's got a lot of moving parts. You could hear it warm up when you first powered it on. There was a toggle switch on the back. It made a really distinct sound when that drum full of 45 RPM records would turn. It would grab your selection and it would place it on the platter. All I can remember about the sound of it was just how big it was. I can remember barely being tall enough to put the selection in of what I wanted to hear and then immediately dropping down on the floor and just having this wall of sound come at me. So for me, being a young kid and having this box that would play me, you know, the Beatles, Rolling Stones, all the greatest music that's ever been recorded back then, that was a very big deal. Today we have playlists and CDs and access to anything, but back then that was really kind of odd for somebody to have a jukebox in their house. So for me, a lot of those early memories of music are directly correlated with that jukebox. I'm going to try and get my dad to tell the story about the jukebox because from what I remember it. So here's the story how I remember it. The jukebox didn't work and it was in like a bar or a, a restaurant or something and they were getting ready to demolish it. Demolish the building. And you went and got it. No, my dad did. Oh, your dad did. Yeah. But he had to lay it down flat, you know, to get it in his station wagon. I do remember several times growing up seeing my dad laying on the floor with his tools and the back doors of that jukebox open and he was fiddling with it and, and fixing it because it, it did need maintenance. Yeah, I'm really glad he was able to get that because I think my entire life would be different without it. And unfortunately, I sold the jukebox. I don't think I'll get another one. I've messed with enough jukeboxes to know that unless you specifically know how to service those things, oh man, it, it's gonna be an issue if you need to have it serviced. At this point, I'm happy to just have the tattoo of the jukebox on the back of my arm. That's enough of a keepsake for me. And in 1984, Christmas morning when I was 11 years old, I came down the stairs and there was my own stereo sitting there. This is a sound design. The model number is a 5642. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. This is one of those all in one, you know, it came with a cabinet, two speakers. It had a cassette player, AM, FM. And at the time that thing was my life. This thing was really entry level. I loved it. Looking back, I can't believe that thing lasted as long as it did because I used that stereo nonstop for a lot of the younger people out there watching. A lot of us didn't have cable TV myself included. When I was 11 years old, we didn't have cable TV. VCRs weren't a thing yet. We didn't have cell phones or internet, obviously. So, you know, for a kid, your stereo was everything. My whole world outside of school revolved around that stereo. And that sound design lasted a long time. It owed me nothing or it owed my parents nothing. And I might've had another stereo between the sound design and this one. But at the age of 17 years old and after saving up money working at Pizza Hut of all places, I was finally able to buy my first stereo. This was a very big deal for me. I saved up quite a bit of money to be able to afford what I bought. I really wanted the Pioneer VSX D1S. I ended up getting a 4900S and it was just fine. I loved that stereo. I really didn't need the D1S looking back at it because I also bought my Sirwin Vega AT15s. I think the stereo system cost me right around $1,100. I think I worked a long time, 
to save up that kind of money because uh, that was a lot of money back then. I think this stereo system at this time of my life probably got more use than any other stereo system I've ever owned. Everybody came over to listen to music at my house because it sounded incredible. You know, you got to think a bunch of 17 year olds listening to ACDC and Metallica and Guns N' Roses, uh, a set of Serwin Vega AT-15s and a midline pioneer from, from that era. It was a lot of fun and we really pushed that stereo to its limits, but that stereo purchased by me with my hard earned pizza hut money. I don't know if I'll ever enjoy music as much as I did on that stereo on a, on another note. Recently, a 4900S came through, and of course, I was really excited to hook this up, give it a listen, see if it sounded like I remembered. It's funny because it sounded exactly the way I remember it sounding, and I didn't like it. It, it sounds kind of dark. I, I think this whole line sounds kind of dark because I actually have a D1S now. And it sounds dark too. I don't listen to it. It's kind of a, a keepsake type of piece, honestly. As a 17 year old kid, I didn't really know any better, but listening to one recently after experiencing so many other stereos, it really does kind of sound dark to me. And my memory of how it sounds is kind of dark to me as well. So nonetheless, 17 years old, I was never going to complain about the way that stereo sounded because it was awesome. It was perfect for that time. And I'm really going to shift gears on you. I'm going to talk about something we've never talked about on this channel. Hopefully I don't lose any of you out there. I had a 1992 Chevy S10 truck that had the greatest stereo system in it I had ever heard. And I've got to talk about it because this was one of those stereos. It doesn't matter if it's a home stereo or if it's a set of headphones, a portable player. If you get a piece of equipment and it makes you want to go through your entire catalog and listen to everything you love and own on it, then that is a game changing piece of equipment. This one just so happened to be a car stereo that was built into a 92 Chevy S10 truck. A friend of mine called me and said, Hey, there's this guy that works for a local car installation company. He's doing a fire sale on his truck. He just needs to get rid of it and he wants to get rid of it now. You need to go down there and hear the stereo system in there. So I went to this audio shop and I go in the back and he's got trophies with this truck everywhere. And I don't remember, I think he got like third or fourth and national in his division, but this truck was insanely built with two 15 inch woofers in the bed of the truck. And then what they did was they put a rubber boot so that they could port the two woofers in the bed of the truck into the cab. So in between the two captain's chairs, there was this hole that was shooting bass into the cab. And this was all powered by Hyphonics amplifiers. Anybody familiar with the vintage car audio world will know what Hyphonics is. You didn't, you didn't want to be in the truck when you turned it up this loud but it had a remote for the head unit and I could hold it outside the window and turn up the volume to where the windows would literally vibrate. But on the flip side, besides it being insanely loud at lower volumes, it still sounded incredible. It had all new custom door moldings to hold the 10 inch woofers in the doors. Everything was soundproofed and, you know, built for competition for sound. And this thing sounded incredible. Unfortunately, I moved to Florida at one point. I got T-boned by somebody with no insurance and no driver's license. I pulled the stereo equipment out of it and it went to the dump. I didn't have full coverage insurance. I was broke and going to college back then. I listened to more music in that thing than any other vehicle I've ever owned. That was a lot of fun. It really was. You car audio guys out there, I get it. I totally get it. And then the last one, and maybe the biggest game changer, as far as stereo equipment goes of my life is a Harman and Kardon 330C. I've talked about this in other videos before, but really Skylabs would not even be in existence if it wasn't for that little receiver that I picked up on Craigslist for 40 or 50 bucks. And at the time paired it up with my Serwin Vega AT-15s that I still own. 
And I just had that light bulb moment of, I cannot believe something this old can sound this good for that little amount of money. From there on out, I was buying and selling on Craigslist and going to every garage sale, thrift store, estate sale I could find just to try and find the silver gold, as we call it. I haven't looked back. There, there is an element to this hobby and that thrill of the hunt that grabbed me back then. And it's all because of that Harman Kardon 330C. Just one of those random turn of events that takes your life in a completely different direction. And that's definitely a secret in the hi-fi world that's maybe becoming not so much a secret anymore. And that is, it's those little 15, 18 watt per channel amplifiers or receivers that'll really impress you the most. I think most people just look past them because they don't think they've got enough watts to make their speakers do what they want to, and they are totally wrong. You don't have to have super efficient speakers for a 15 watt per channel amplifier. Even if it's not gonna rattle the windows, you might be really impressed by the sound quality and the amount of fun you have with a small little receiver. Don't look past the little guys, they will impress you. And unfortunately for a lot of us out there that have experienced so many great pieces of gear at this point, um, it, it's hard to get those life-changing pieces, you know, the, the ones that make you wanna re-listen to every record or every CD you've ever owned um, on this new system that that's really just opened everything wide open for you. But that is something that makes my job in this business so fun is getting to see people getting into the hobby that really haven't experienced a hi-fi stereo system and knowing that they're about ready to go home and have that experience where it changes the music that you've heard your whole life and makes it better and more engaging and all the good things that come with the hi-fi hobby. And we hear it quite often. You know, a lot of people come in and they say, you know, I, I was blown away with how good it sounded. I didn't know music could sound that good. And we've all been there, every single one of us. You know, unless you grew up with an audiophile parent, most likely you've discovered this hobby on your own and you just caught the bug, which is what happened for me, really. I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane with me and the stereos that have impacted my life as much as they have. And definitely put yours down in the comments. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you.